Keeping the anger to yourself is not the same thing as repressing it, which is denying that it's there or being unaware that it's there. You acknowledge that it's there, but you keep it to yourself. The reason for this advice is twofold. First, by keeping it to yourself, you're not as likely to dwell on it and feed it with stories to try to convince your partner of your position. Second, by keeping it to yourself, you avoid the possibility of triggering your partner's conditioning and a potentially unproductive or destructive interaction. Discussions about conditioning aren't helpful if you and your partner are identified with the ego, because they're bound to turn into arguments which are destructive to a relationship. From this level, little can be accomplished. In discussing conditioning with your partner, the best that can be hoped for is that you come to understand each other's conditioning. But unless you both are identified with essence when you're doing it, exploring conditioning isn't likely to be productive. Even trying to do this from essence has its limitations and dangers. Although your intent may be to explore and understand conditioning and not blame or judge your partner, your conditioning may get triggered by this discussion and it may turn into an argument or at least become unproductive. There's also no guarantee that the insights you come up with will be that useful or applied when the going gets tough. These insights can just as easily be discovered independently by meditating on the issue and asking for internal guidance. You don't need to get insight about your conditioning or your partner's from your partner. You can get it from yourself, and it's much safer to get it that way. The same is true about processing your conditioning. If this is done at all, it's better to do it by yourself than with your partner who has his or her own issues and points of view, which may not be that helpful to your understanding and healing. A therapist may be valuable, but don't make the mistake of thinking that your partner can or should be able to be your therapist. The ego is very tricky, and even couples with very pure intentions, a good grasp of psychology, and good communication skills can get sidetracked into blame, judgment, anger and irrationality, because the ego can get triggered at any time. How not to feed anger. The best way to disarm anger so that it doesn't become a destructive force in your relationships is to not give it any attention. Instead, just notice it and do nothing else about it. It can help to remind yourself that the anger is just conditioning arising, and that, as such, it's not worthy of your attention. By sending the opposite message, the egoic mind keeps us involved with anger. It convinces us that the anger we're feeling is important, meaningful, true, and must be expressed. Because of the tendency to believe this, you may have established a habit of expressing anger, in that case, you may need to counteract this habit with affirmations that have the opposite effect, ones that make it easier to put your attention elsewhere. For example, it's just conditioning, or love is more important than this. One thing that can help you move beyond any anger you may be feeling is to pay attention to something else rather than to try to not pay attention to the anger. When you're told not to think of a pink elephant, of course pink elephants are all you can think of. Likewise, if you try to not pay attention to the anger and the thoughts behind it, you're likely to pay attention to them. Paying attention to anything else will get your mind off the conditioning and anger. Thinking gives the anger fuel, and if you cut off the fuel, the anger will dissipate. However, you have to cut off the fuel for long enough and continue doing so every time the anger returns. Some conditioning is very persistent, especially if you've habitually indulged the anger. 
the egoic mind will try to overwhelm you with thoughts and reasons why the anger should be expressed, and these can be difficult to ignore. Through persistence, the ego is often able to erode our best intentions to ignore anger. The conditioning behind very compelling thoughts and feelings might need to be addressed through closer examination or therapy before the thoughts and feelings become less compelling. Nevertheless, doing your best to repeatedly put your attention elsewhere and not indulge the anger will be rewarded by an eventual lessening of the power of the thoughts and the anger. There are a number of things you can put your attention on instead. For one, you can put it on a more positive thought. However, giving attention to any kind of thought is a little tricky because it keeps you involved with the mind and the next thing you know you're paying attention to a negative thought again. A much better strategy is to turn your awareness away from the world of thought to the real world, to what's happening right now in the present moment. One way to focus on the moment is to pay attention to what's coming in through your senses. When you do this, be sure you pay attention to the experience of seeing, listening, and sensing, and not to any thoughts about the experience. It's easy to get ambushed by the mind. If this happens, just bring yourself back to the experience of seeing, listening, and sensing. Paying attention to the senses takes you out of your mind and into your body and the moment. Experiencing your body brings you into the moment, which is the domain of essence and where true happiness is found. The mind holds us hostage in its world of struggle and pain. It convinces us that we need to be in the world of thought, the world of the past and the future. We are programmed to believe its version of life and how to be happy. But when we drop into the moment and into essence, we discover something else, our real self. Many other things can bring us into the moment as well. And these things are covered more extensively in other books of mine. Beauty is one of the things that brings us into the moment. Seeing something beautiful, particularly something in nature, can drop us into essence, where the insignificance and untruth of our conditioning is obvious. When we're experiencing essence, our conditioned ideas are put in perspective and seen for what they are, programming. It's obvious they have nothing to do with who we really are. When we're aligned with essence, we're aware of the thoughts in our mind, but we understand they have nothing to do with who we really are. We know they're part of the conditioned self, the false self. Focusing on or paying attention to anything other than our thoughts brings us into the moment and into the experience of essence. When our mind is focused on something, it's not thinking, but experiencing what it's focused on. For example, if you focus on your breath, you're noticing the experience of breathing. Or if you focus on what you're doing, you're noticing the experience of doing. Focusing on anything or just noticing what is happening now in this moment automatically brings us into the moment and aligns us with essence simply because when we're focusing or noticing, we aren't thinking. If you want to go back to the ego's world, just start thinking again. Start thinking about what breathing means, or tell a story about why you're doing what you're doing instead of just experiencing these things, and you'll be back in the mind. And your next thought is likely to be a conditioned one. Exercise, not feeding the anger. The next time you feel angry, notice what went on just before you felt angry. What thought caused you to feel angry? Where did this thought come from? It just arose out of nowhere. That is conditioning. You didn't invite that thought, 
and you didn't create it. It just appeared. The anger appeared out of nowhere, too. You can't do anything about this thought or the anger, but you can do something about what happens next. And what you choose to do at this point is crucial. Stop the cycle of anger right away by not feeding it with more thoughts, stories, and feelings. If you don't give your attention to thoughts related to the conditioning and the anger, the anger will subside. Withdraw your attention from those thoughts and the anger and put your attention on something else. This isn't denial or repression, but good mental health. You replace a habit that's mentally unhealthy with a healthy one. Although you can't prevent conditioned thoughts and anger from arising, by turning your attention to something positive or beautiful and bringing yourself into the moment by focusing on your experience rather than on your thoughts, you drop into essence, where the anger and conditioning aren't a problem. How to work with anger There are times when it's beneficial to examine the conditioning that is the source of our anger. When the same conditioning and anger come up repeatedly and compellingly, something about it may need to be seen before it becomes weak enough to stop hooking us. We all have conditioning that's difficult to ignore. Issues that come up again and again and never seem to get resolved. These issues affect our relationships as we go round and round with our partner in an attempt to resolve them. Relationships are no place to resolve our personal issues. They certainly trigger those issues, but that's exactly why they aren't the place to work on these things. Besides the fact that your partner is probably not a therapist, it's not your partner's responsibility to heal you. It's yours. Fortunately, it's possible to work through many of our issues on our own. For the ones that are driven by repressed emotions and other deep-seated complexes, psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, energy work, or some other healing modality is recommended. There's a way to diminish the compelling nature of conditioning. Becoming aware of what you're thinking and feeling is the key. To do this, you have to move from being absorbed in thinking and feeling to witnessing your thoughts and feelings. From this more objective place, you can notice and investigate your thoughts. The egoic mind is the ego-driven and ego-controlled mind. When the mind is under the control of the ego, it's irrational and compulsively driven by conditioning and the ego's goals. Fortunately, the mind is also capable of being used by essence, which uses the mind to break through the spell cast by the ego. It does this by introducing objectivity and analysis to the irrationality of the egoic mind. Essence uses the mind to unravel conditioning and diminish the power of the ego. Essence's ability to do this is what makes it possible for us to wake up out of the illusion of being separate and realize our true nature as oneness. To get free of our most compelling conditioning, we need to enlist Essence's help by aligning with the aspect of the mind that is capable of witnessing and analyzing our thoughts. We actually observe and examine our thoughts all the time, but when deep-seated complexes or other entrenched conditioning comes up, we often lose our ability to witness and analyze our thoughts and feelings. We go unconscious and just react to them. When this is happening, we need to learn to notice that, and noticing that, will re-establish ourselves as the witness. This isn't as difficult as it may sound because it's easy enough to tell when we're reacting unconsciously. 
But often at that point, we don't care what's happening because we're so involved in our feelings. The most obvious sign of going unconscious is feeling angry. Other strong feelings are signs as well, but anger is an especially obvious sign because it manifests so noticeably in the body. When you feel angry, you've bought into some idea long enough to trigger your emotions. This happens almost instantly, but the anger will only grow and be sustained if you heap more ideas onto the initial idea. Once that happens, to dissipate the anger, you'll need to become aware of the initial idea and the others, too. Anger is a sign that you need to do some inquiry to trace back and uncover the ideas that created and fueled the anger. Inquiry is a matter of asking some very simple questions. What triggered the anger? What should, unmet expectation, or other belief is behind it? Is that true? Keep asking these questions until you've uncovered some of the untrue beliefs behind your anger. When you see their untruth, their ability to cause you to become angry is lessened. For example, you're really angry that your partner's having an affair with someone. Most people would agree that you should be angry, and he or she deserves any fallout that may occur. But that's the ego talking. Anger doesn't feel good, and you don't have to carry it around with you. It's damaging to your health, to your relationships, and potentially to every area of your life. Anger doesn't serve, so it serves you to not let it take over, even when it seems justified. Of course anger would arise in this situation, but it will only continue if you dwell on this feeling and the thoughts that caused it. What thoughts might be behind this anger and the hurt that is undoubtedly there too? There are probably many thoughts. When you look, you discover the following negative conclusions or stories you've spun about the affair. He shouldn't have done that. I'm not beautiful enough. I'll never find someone like him again. I'm not lovable. I can't live without him. I hate him. Those are sweeping statements, and none of them are true no matter how true they may feel in the moment. The strength of our feelings is not an indication of truth, but of how much power we've given the thoughts behind the feelings, how much we've believed these thoughts, and how often we've thought them. Essence is able to bring objectivity, equanimity, and peace to even this situation, if we're willing to experience the truth of the situation rather than the ego stories about it. Essence's truth is that even this experience serves in some way, and Essence will show you how it serves and how to deal with it if you listen to your heart, the spiritual heart, rather than to your egoic mind. The spiritual heart does not refer to one's emotions. The spiritual heart is the place in the center of the chest where the divine connects with the human and where we receive intuitive guidance. It is all good, and when we drop into our heart, we know this. Here is an inquiry you can do when you feel angry. Inquiry. Discovering what is behind your anger. Ideas that trigger anger are most often shoulds and unmet expectations. The next time you feel angry, look for the reason. What triggered the anger? Was it something someone did or said? Most conditioning is triggered and the tendency is to blame others for how we feel. Rather than blaming others, get curious about what your anger stems from. Finding the stimulus is only the beginning 
because that stimulus isn't the cause of your anger. The real cause is what you told yourself as a result of that stimulus. Sometimes these thoughts are so quick or unconscious we aren't even aware of thinking them. Look and see what really caused you to be angry. Look for a belief about how things should be and how they don't meet this expectation. Once you find the should or unmet expectation behind your anger, ask, Is that true? Shoulds are programmed ideas about the way life is supposed to be. They are always false, because life is the way it is, and any attachment to life being different from that is the cause of your unhappiness. Keep examining the answers your mind comes up with to explain why things should be the way you think they should be. Keep asking, is that true? You're likely to uncover many lies, partial truths, that are fueling your anger, both consciously and unconsciously. This kind of inquiry is very beneficial because it unmasks the egoic mind's lies and once they're unmasked, they lose their power. However, these lies may need to be unmasked many times before they stop arising. But each time you do so, they become weaker. Freeing yourself from conditioning takes commitment and persistence, and the ego will try to talk you out of it by telling you this inquiry doesn't help. If you really want to be free, you won't listen. Sometimes feelings are so strong that you can't take your mind off of them and put it on something else. They may even be so strong that you find it difficult to do inquiry. When that happens, the best way to work with your anger is to just be there with it, without trying to change it or doing anything about it. Just sit with it on an energetic level and see what happens. <laughs>